Welcome to this special edition of the Ultimate Combat Experience, episode 13 of UCE's Greatest Knockouts. And who would have thought we had 13 episodes of knockouts? And what I'm told is we haven't even gotten halfway through uh, what we've got on tape. But uh, tonight's episode is going uh, um, to have a couple guys we haven't seen in a little while. Dennis Gloria, the Batman. We haven't seen him in a little bit. Blake Sprouse, haven't seen him either. we got a lot of other guys that you'll recognize from days gone by. But in your main event, Brandon Melendez and Big J Justin Wright, a fight you cannot forget. I can't wait to see that one in your main event. It's the Ultimate Combat Experience KO Edition coming right at you. In your middleweight division, got a guy we haven't seen in a little while, Mike Gates of Hell Gates, going up against Brian Beebe in a knockout edition. Check it out. Well, as we continue our march toward the Delta Center in this round of champions, uh, we're bringing back guys that we haven't seen in a little while. Yep. Uh, Brian Beebe is back as one of our past champions to, to fight a guy who's really on the up and come uh, list here, Michael Gates. And uh, we mentioned that he's fighting each and every week because he wants to fight his way to the Delta well, Center. Well, Mike, that's one of these stories that's inside of the Ultimate Combat that you might not know about. We told Mike Gates here, we're going to get you as many tough opponents as we can. Uh, he mopped through Jason Jones last week, and now he's going up against Brian Beebe, who is a pretty slick submission fighter. Well, fighting week after week, is, uh, it's a rush, it's fun. I love doing it. Um, I got the drive to do it, so just basically fighting week after week is going to help me you know, get to the Delta Center and win the championship. It's going to prepare me, so I haven't really had any tough competition yet. Um, it's coming, though. Brian Beebe, I don't look, him, look at him as a tough competition. Uh, next week, I got a, a pretty tough opponent. I forget his name, but uh, it's getting better, so I'm looking forward to it. Well, those are some pretty big words right there, Johnny Richie. Ooh. I don't know if Michael Gates was watching or paying attention at the last Delta Center show, because Brian Beebe showed me a lot. He's not just a submission no, fighter. He no. had some awesome stand-up, and at six foot two, he poses some problems here in the 195-pound division. Well, Mike, he's been around the block. He's been around for a long time. People in the in the MMA game in Utah know who this kid is, and uh, he's here to, to stake his claim as the champ. This is what I've been waiting for. I wanted a tournament to show my skills off. Uh, the money helps too. And you know, it's, a, it's where all the, the guys bring their toughest kids from the playground to fight. And let's see who the toughest kid in the playground is. Oh, that'd be great to bring it back to my gym. That's, that's the goal right there. Um, it's a personal goal. It's, it's always been my goal to win a belt. And uh, this is the show to do it in. Uh, Brian Beebe is a, a classy guy, and he, he works up there with that Ogden Fighting Alliance group, and over the years, they put out some pretty tough fighters. He's the one uh, lone representative in the show right now, and uh, well, I really, I, I, you can't help but root for the kid. He's a great guy. He is a great guy, Mike, and uh, he's got a very good style of fighting. You know, he, he does a great job of doing what he does, and Gates is, well, in his past fights, Mike, he's just been full board, just comes at you punching, kicking, swinging, trying to throw you down, and, and, and maybe that's kind of looks like what he's trying to do Gates here tonight. Gates does have it all. He's an accomplished boxer. He says he's had probably 30 uh, amateur boxing matches and uh, a very good wrestler, a college-level wrestler. You saw there with that takedown there. But, boy, ah. you don't want to leave things behind when you're fighting Brian Beebe. Wow, he just about got arm locked there, and that was almost a fatal error on his part. <laughs> don't look past anybody. Yeah, don't look past anybody. He even said, I don't even think, I don't consider this kid tough competition. Uh, be careful what you say because right there we saw he almost had him. You know, I think that might be a testament to the fact Brian Beebe, he just looks like everyday guy, sure. the guy next door, you know. I yeah. mean, uh, but you know, he's he's a very good fighter. Well, Gates right there, Mike. He's got an, almost another arm lock yeah. on Johnny Richie. Looking for that submission fighter, he is. Mike Gates uh, doing a pretty good job of hammering down some forearms uh, from that knee position right there, Mike. He's got one leg up, and one leg down, and he's he's uh, seemed to be landing some pretty good shots. He against is Brian a Beebe. physical kid, and he does land heavy shots inside the guard right there, and that'll make any submission fighter's guard loosen up just a little, a little bit. bit. That will certainly thwarted the arm lock attempt there. 
there. He just got <laughs> landed a couple of shots that Brian Beebe, I'm sure, <laughs> didn't care much for. But Brian Beebe's not going to stop climbing up the body, Mike. And you see right there, he's trying to get positioning, uh, trying to look for what arm to attack at this point. He's got both uh, uh, legs where he needs him to be. Close again. He's up there. He's got two arms isolated. Ah. Oh, just, and now he's changed into a triangle, but uh, Mike Gates saw that coming and uh, threw the leg off there. Now he's got the back of Brian Beebe and landed some big punches here. Yeah, trying to, trying to get some shots from oh, underneath that right there. Big, some oh, big man. shots right there. It, was that a t oh, yeah, I thought he was tapped right there, but man, oh, man. It looked like he was tapping, and then he brought his hand back just to protect, and boy, he's got, it's done. That's yeah, it. it's over, man. That is over. That is punishment right there. He took a beating under there, and Brian Beebe's a tough kid, but man, nobody can withstand that kind of punishment. Oh, man, from all different angles, you see Gates with the takedown right here, Mike, fighting from inside of the guard, almost gets arm locked, almost gets triangled, and then just gets into a position where he can rain down the bombs. Boy, that's good footage there in your crush combat, Kim. You saw the punishment that Brian Beebe was taking from underneath, and Mike Gates might not have thought Brian Beebe was going to be a tough opponent. He found out otherwise, but did get past the tough opponent. That was the first time we saw Mike Gates, but we sure saw a lot more of him here in the UC. In fact, that was not his only knockout. He ended up knocking a lot of people out. Before moving up to Montana, we missed that guy. We're going to switch gears now. We're going to go to the little guys, and uh, James McFadden and Richard Emling are going to fight, but right after that, we're going to take a look at the pocket. James Cottrell. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Didn't even know we were fighting for a tournament to fight for a belt. Heck, I I would love to have a belt. That'd be awesome. I'm a fan of pro wrestling and see that big gold belt. I want to carry that around my shoulder, man. That'd be awesome. The fighting this round means everything to me. This is for the belt. I train with a lot of champions. I want to be a champion and uh, and take this one home for the team. Maybe a little more confidence. I got some friends here, unlike last week where I got a little pissed off because nobody showed. Uh, I hopefully I can read him a little better this time. Last time he almost busted my nose wide open. Uh, he said I gave him a really good body slam, so I'm going to keep trying that move on him, maybe knock him out. I beat this guy once before. I'm going to beat him again. Uh, I'm not looking past this fight. I have to win this one to go to the Delta Center, but I will be going to the Delta Center. Well, as they mentioned, Johnny Ritchie, they're fighting for the belts this round, and these guys are so little, the belts are bigger than both of them put together. <laughs> yeah, they have to carry them on their shoulder because there's no way they'd fit around their waist. <laughs> exactly. But uh, we've seen these two in the ring before, and Schmeagel won that first meeting, and James McFadden here trying to step it up and take it the second time. Yeah, Schmeagel is definitely the more intense fighter, I think, Mike, training over there with the Drew crew, and he just knows that he's going to get in here and beat this kid in his own mind. Oh, well, he just took a big <laughs> shot right there, and Schmeagel just landed right on his butt. I think it's fight's over, Johnny. Look, Are you kidding me? Was that fast motion? We saw slow motion a minute ago, and boy, it looks like John Whoa. Gordon's going to step in and stop this thing. Little wow. backflip. Hey. hey, Johnny Richie, that's your move. Oh, oh no, that's no. your move. That's your move right there, man. <laughs> Holy cow, wow. that was sweet. James McFadden. James Who would have thought? Who would have thought James McFadden is going to the Delta Center for the <laughs> finals, <laughs> a round of champions. Wow. Do you think that the referee uh, called it a little too soon? I did. Uh, the shot hurt me, but I, I was getting ready to move because just on the ground I was moving. I, I think I was okay. The most surprised guy in the room was this guy right yeah. here. Very, 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 very surprised. Who the hell knew? He told me, he said, I hit him, and then I noticed he was hurt, and I didn't know what to do. I'm not used to actually getting close to winning, so it's a little shock. You know, you hit him, he's down. It's like, oh, yeah, I got to kill him. Wait. You didn't only get close to winning. You won. And the other thing, he said, I wish my girlfriend could have seen it. No, I wish she could have. Well, when she grows up, she can come watch She's, the fights. She, her birthday's the same day as mine. <laughs> okay, well, when you guys both grow up. <laughs> all right, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, congratulations. It's got to feel pretty good. Yeah, I'm, I can't believe it. I'm going to the Delta Center. I'm going to the Files. I will win the ball! The pocket taking on Sean Healy out of, uh, out of the Taylorsville area. I've worked real hard uh, these last couple of weeks. Been doing a lot of training, running, uh, boxing, wrestling some submissions. It would mean a lot to me to take this belt back, especially back to Orem, and especially for Utah, it'd be nice. I'm going to beat him. Um, been training real hard with Don Longmore and Justin, who's working real hard. We're going to make it. I came here to win, and that's my whole goal. Well, Johnny Richie, we mentioned the last group of guys are really small. Well, these guys are just a little bit bigger than them. But that doesn't change the fact that they're fighting for the belt, too, Mike. Oh, but will the belt fit all the way around these guys on the way <laughs> side? Oh, my goodness, right there. Looks like uh, Pocket Hercules is not messing around. He wants no. that belt. No, he wants it, Mike. He, you know, he's usually a great wrestler. But looks like he just wants to stand up this time and trade. No, people don't Bingo! know he's a good boxer. That left hand, I think, put Sean Healy, sending him back to Utah County in a box there, man. That is it. 
Once again, you cannot judge a book by its cover. James Cottrell is this big. Sean Healy is this big. Knocks him out. And James Cottrell knocked a lot of people out that way. When we come back, we're going to take a look at a little bit of kickboxing. Welcome back to the Ultimate Combat Experience. As promised, we're going to move into the kickboxing world. Now, Mike Platt got knocked out trying his hand at mixed martial arts. So he said, let me try kickboxing. Maybe it's a little bit safer. Going to go up against a guy by the name of Beans and Rice, Gerardo Briannis. We haven't seen much of Team Extreme in quite a while, Johnny Ritchie, but they're back, and Gerardo Briones being their representative this go-around. Pretty tough kid. We've seen him in the past, but he's named after a side dish. And beans and Rice actually went up against Travis the Animal Paxton. And not, a very, uh, not a very fun fight for your first time to go up against the animal. He beat her, although pretty bad. Yeah, pretty he bad. didn't fare so well. They're 6 foot 163 pounds, but uh, as he mentioned earlier to me tonight, he says, you know, that representing Team Extreme and coming back in a big way is important to him. It is important. He's here to represent. Let's just see how he does. Okay. Well, last time I was here, I was nervous. Cameras, plus getting repeatedly socked in the jaw by Paxton, that didn't help. I've been doing a lot more training, a lot more punching. I think I'm ready to go. I train in boxing three hours a day, four times a week. I do a lot of running. Good diet, no meat, stuff will kill you. Well, I can't predict a win. You don't know how it's going to go, but uh, I can predict a fight. It's going to be a fight. Well, it's going to predict the fight. It's going to be a fight. Well, <laughs> you know, he's, he's had a pretty tough luck of the draw. He fought, as you mentioned, Travis Paxton, one of the tougher guys we've seen. But Mike Platt, uh, Igneous Fatuous, is no slouch himself. He's not Mike, but, you know, it's he's new to the kickboxing game. He is uh, typically an NHB guy. He uh, learned his submission off the internet, like you said. He's good at arm bars, good at triangle chokes. I just don't know how good at kicking and, his, and, and punching his guys. background is in wrestling, so this is a big disadvantage for him. At 5'10", 168 pounds, his first foray into NHB, or into kickboxing well the last time I was in the cage I fought Stephen Razor Sharp and he need me in the eye which ended the fight and uh, since then I've been playing a lot of video games I don't know I haven't really done anything since then I'm kind of fat and lazy and we'll see how it goes well lately I've been playing Fight Night 2000 which is a boxing game you know since I got a boxing fight tonight and on that I'm the lightweight, featherweight, middleweight, welterweight and heavyweight champion of the world so I think I got a pretty good chance. Uh, his name is Beans and Rice and uh, I'm not really that hungry it kind of makes me sick to think about it and I hate losing. What a goofball, Johnny. Man, that gets you me into drama class somewhere, man. <laughs> when he said he was sick, he actually looked like, like he was, he was sick. sick. <laughs> you know, he, he said he learned submission off the internet, but what he, most people didn't know is he learned those off the porn sites. But yeah. I'm curious if this uh, Fight Night 2000, what it's all about. He, he switched from Punch Out to uh, Game Night to Fight Night 2000. And <laughs> he just caught a pretty big right hand. Briones threw a nice little hook while he was backpedaling there. Looked like it landed pretty fleshly. Didn't really have much of a lingering effect. Oh, oh. my goodness, that one did. What? That was a short right hand that landed right on the button, Johnny Ritchie. And, uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to see that again. I, I don't know what I'll, happened. I'll have my beans and rice to go is what <laughs> Mike Platt's saying. What? Just wow! Happened. Team Extreme back in a big way, Johnny Ritchie. I can't believe it, Mike. I, I think I blinked, and I don't even know what happened. All of a sudden, it's over. He threw two short little right hands, and the first one, as I mentioned, it looked like it connected but didn't really hurt him. But you see here in your oh. Crush Combat Cam, brought to you by TheOinkShop.com, the second one did. And it sent Mike Fat, Igneous Fatuous Platt <laughs> down for the count. Oh, I just saw that on the Crush Combat Cam. Wow, bro. And he said, nice job, Mike Platt. I'm so sorry. Come back. Go back and do it again. Wow. Mike Platt getting knocked out in kickboxing as well. Maybe he should try a non-contact sport like checkers or something. We're going to take a look now at Travis White. Now, Travis White, he's been in quite a few of these episodes, and well, I'm not going to tell you what happens here. There's two back-to-back -back Travis White fights. Well, 
Normally we have a one fight limit for Travis White. We don't don't let him fight more than once a round, but this round he's fought twice and we're going to show them both back to back. Travis White, he's fighting a kid named Travis Hall. Travis Hall, Mike, he's got a sweet haircut. It's pretty much like the mullet. <laughs> it, uh, it's flowing in the wind and he comes out with an amazing kick. I'll tell you what, the sweet haircut though, he's not so much on writing a bio. You know what his bio says? What? 20, 29 years old. <laughs> 29 years old. He tried to do a jumping, uh, looks like a cross kick or something and he fell right on his back. And that hairdo was popular back when he was about 29, 29 years, years ago. old. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's getting hammered on right now by Travis White. We talked about his uh, one limit fight per round. Whoa, baby! Throw. You cannot find two more polar opposites here, and I'm not going to mention the fact that this guy is pasty white pasty. with a mullet. <laughs> <laughs> what just happened right there? Travis stopped and paused and flexed for his opponent. What was that? The, that the Matrix pose? <laughs> <laughs> the Matrix pose. He gave him a little whatever. Well, it's a little warning, oh. little warning for a whoop your ass. <laughs> As you, every time he hits him, man, that hair just goes flying. <laughs> guys with oh! guys with mullets should not do spinning kicks because your hair comes around before your feet doesn't. Boy, oh boy, look at Travis White. Lip Whoa, talking <laughs> a little smack right there. A little Travis Buxton in his corner helping him through his uh, kickboxing days. One too many Travises in the ring here tonight. One too Johnny many Rich, Travises. But, uh, looks like Travis Hall is... Uh, Trying to figure out where he's at right now. But uh, we're going to shift gears once again. We're sticking with Travis White, but we're going to give him a Hispanic opponent now. <laughs> Ruben Flores. Ruben Flores. Mike, this kid's a pretty good guy. Always comes to the fights. Uh, loves to just be part of the action, whether he's watching, whether he's in the ring. And this is his first time in the ring, I think. Well, actually, he's a cool cat. He's been training a little bit. In fact, he's been training with Travis White <laughs> over at my gym. They've been training quite a bit. And, and Ruben was a little bit apprehensive about taking this fight because Travis is kind of the guy who taught him some things when he first came to the gym. Did he teach him that right there, the banana no, I think he got that one from uh, Travis White, Travis Hall. Oh, Travis Hall? <laughs> what Travis is he training with, Mike? Let's get it straight. <laughs> Again, you know, it's kind of it's kind of fun to watch when these guys that train together fight each other. And I almost see that they really take it up a notch. Sometimes these guys actually go harder than when they would normally because they, they feel like, you know, we've got to. <laughs> yeah, we've got to. I'm training underneath you. i got to show you what I've got. Maybe what you've taught me. Maybe it's a pride thing. I'm not sure. But uh, Travis White is a pretty tough kid, Mike. You can't say enough about him. He's been around a long time. Oh, he's he been with us since day one. And I want to say real quickly that this fight here didn't get cut because it was lame. It's actually a pretty good fight. These guys get after it. And uh, you can see Ruben Flores pressing the action there once again against the kid that was at one time his mentor. His mentor. You know, Travis White, Mike, always in the first two rounds, it seems like first round, he always has a ton of energy. He's full of life. He, he comes out hard. And then, and then he dies off a little bit. And I know that's due to his conditioning. Maybe his age a little bit because Travis is one of the older guys that fight for the show. Why do you keep capping on the old guys, I'm not. Johnny I'm just Richie, saying. That's the second comment you've made about guys over 30, and I'm tired of it. <laughs> The reason why I say this is because my hat's off to these guys, really, Mike. Seriously, they, they step in here. They're doing something that only a small percentage of people would do, and the odds are against them because of their age. Frankly, we'd prefer you left your hat on with that stupid haircut you got, but it's <laughs> oh. <laughs> another story. Michael, the man. lunging jab there, Ruben Flores. You can tell he's getting a little bit tired here with 23 Whoa. seconds left. This starting to get a little bit sloppy. And Travis White not happy about the fact he's been tagged a couple of times here. He's been tattooed by a kid that's only about as tall as tattooed. <laughs> <laughs> he's still dropping bombs on him. If Ruben doesn't stop him, man, he's, he's driving force in this fight right now. Ruben's got a little more crack than uh, he probably should have. That crack's going up his back. <laughs> crack spackle. <laughs> Bite Home Depot. Bite at Home Depot. And that's going to bring it to a wrap here at the end of the first round. And Ruben Flores is going to sit down. And Travis White's going to – he had a hard time finding his corner. It looked like he went over to the wrong <laughs> corner for a minute. Now he's found his way, way to, uh, to sit down for a minute. On a serious note, Mike, who would you give that round to unofficially? What do you think? Well, I don't know. I think uh, Ruben Flores had the better crack, but actually he did. He pressed the mat, pressed the action a little bit uh, more than, than Travis White. And actually, you saw how Travis visibly got shook and, and was visibly upset about a couple of shots. Well, let's see if this round is any different. Let's hope Travis White comes out and, and, and sticks to his game plan. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned that he was going to his corner to sit down, but I did note that Travis White didn't sit down in the corners there. He likes to stand up and, and, and kind of intimidate his, his opponent just a little bit, but uh, he's coming out firing on all cylinders now. He's really come up, stepped it up a notch coming out here in the second round. You would never know these guys trading together. It seems like there's a lot of hatred right now inside <laughs> those ropes, Mike. Yeah, what it is is these guys are, are true sportsmen, and they want to win. They're, they're, they want to win. They're very competitive, and who wants to go back to the gym being the guy who lost to the other guy and train with him? <laughs> Oh, man. Well, Ruben Flores is doing... Oh! Oh, baby. Whoa! Travis White just got sent to the canvas, and that was a big left hand. And we've seen Travis go down before uh, from 
the <laughs> just the wind. punch the one time, but he's actually taken some great shots. Remember the Polynesian kid he fought last round? <laughs> yeah. He took some mean shots and was able to take them. So you never know which Travis White's going to show up. No kidding. Well, I tell you what, he took a couple big shots right there, fought through them, got back up, ready to go and, you know, continue the fight in this round. We only have about a minute left, and they're still exchanging punches. Ruben Flores landed the big punch that should probably win in this round, but it looks like he's kind of sucking pond water now and then lands a couple uppercuts, and that should <laughs> seal the victory in this here, in this round at least. But Ruben Flores is really struggling now. He's pretty tired. Pretty tired. Let's just see if Travis can withstand that and really take advantage of the fact that he is tired. And I don't see Travis kicking as much, Mike. Usually he kicks a lot in his kickboxing matches. Well, when you see a kid dropping his head as much as Ruben Flores is, you've got to throw those kicks and just make him pay for, for ducking the head there. But I haven't seen Travis White do that at all today. And, and he probably should reevaluate that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that just has to do with him being tired. You can see on his face, man, he is sucking pond water, as you'd say. He is tired. Well, not to mention, he got dropped just a few minutes ago, and who knows what the remaining uh, effects of that may be. <laughs> and fortunately for both these guys, we got a little break coming up here, so because things were just about to get pretty ugly. Pretty ugly. They were starting to hug right there at the end, but it goes into the third round, which is great to see. Travis White always putting on a show for us, going into the third round. Well, we haven't seen the third round in this show yet, and uh, and, and once again, this fight didn't get cut because it wasn't any good. I'm not sure what's going on there. Mod's class, I think. <laughs> One, two, breathe. Well, he's talking to the wrong guy because it looks like Ruben Flores is the one that's three months pregnant. Not <laughs> <laughs> but look at Heavy Runner, man. That kid is with you, Ruben. Oh, yeah, he is. And he, yeah. when he teaches you how to breathe, you start breathing just because you're afraid not to. <laughs> Ruben Flores comes out. Not as much action in this third round, it looks like, Mike. They came out in the first two rounds really fight. Well, man, I eat my words. You come back out and fire in a little bit. It looks like we may have cut this thing down a little bit. Here we got started with a minute left in the round, and I'm not sure why, but apparently... Uh, uh, we had to cut some of the boring stuff out, and we're going to head right down into the final 45 seconds of this slugfest. Well, that's a good thing about the cutting room floor, Mike. We have the power to do that. If your fight's boring, we're going to cut a couple minutes off of it for the oh, show. Yeah, I, you, we should do that in some of your fights, man. <laughs> cut all the boring parts. <laughs> and not just my fights, all the fights. <laughs> Uh, 30 seconds left, and I'm just not so sure you're going to see a whole hell of a lot of action here in the last 30 seconds. But I will say that Ruben Flores, in my scorecard at least, he won round one. He, he had to get a 10-8 round with a knockdown in round two. And I'm not sure exactly what happened in the first half of this round, but it doesn't look like Travis oh. White's doing a whole lot to win this thing back. And, and Travis is going to take a little break, breather here. Mike, in the is that fatigue or was that a knockdown? That's Well, he's just done, period. Whether it's fatigue or not, he spit the mouthpiece out yeah, and said, done. Man, take me home. Oh, Travis White, man. You know you're my buddy. I wish you'd uh, get back in the gym, get a little bit more cardio, come back in here and refight this uh, Ruben Flores kid. <laughs> Flores is happy, and he very well should be. Great job. He beat a kid that he knows is pretty tough because he's seen him in the gym quite a bit. And don't get mad at me, Ruben. All the wisecracks. Johnny Richie made me do it. That's all the Travis White we're going to see. We've seen him in several of the episodes, and he's done now. Actually, I think he did get knocked out a couple more times, but we're going to spare him the misery. Uh, when we come back, we're going to see a couple one-hit wonders. A couple guys that came in here, got knocked out, never came back. Welcome back to the Ultimate Combat Experience. Now, for the break, we told you there were a couple guys that came in here and they were just one-hit wonders. They got inside the cage or the ring and decided, that hurts, I don't want to try this ever again. Rodney McFarland and Lance Brown are a couple of those guys. Well, basically, I've been, you know, bouncing for about a year or whatever, just to the point where we couldn't even do nothing, so now I can be able to use my hands and do whatever I need to do. You know what I'm saying? Represent Lufkin, Texas. It's great from down south. Show these so boys what it's all about. I need to do something with my life, and this looks like the best thing I got right now, so I'm going to go get it. Uh, I've taken a year of uh, moving Doe, Happy Doe, and a year of wrestling in high school, so I'm going to get out there and uh, probably spend a lot of time on the ground or in holds. He's a big guy, it looks like, and uh, with my limited skill, I'm not quite sure, but I'm going to give it my best and hope for the work. Hope it comes out the best. Well, strap yourselves in because we got three fights, Johnny Ritchie, that go so fast. We're going to run them right in a row here. We're going to start with the two guys that have a couple of the best nicknames in the business. We got Snap and Pop and 
Rodney McFarland got yeah. you sick. Oh, throw up, baby. Man, I don't know where he got that. I don't know where got he got you that sick either. throw up. But he's got some sick right hands. He's landing right there on snap and pop. Believe me, snap and pop's hearing a lot of snapping and popping in his neck right now. Mike, that's what I call hop key dough. He just got worked. <laughs> That's what I call hot tea <laughs> belly, man. Look at that thing. <laughs> Things all over the place. Rodney McFarland getting it done. Now we got a couple of guys that uh, this guy didn't ever come back because we made him a nickname he didn't like. Diaper Rash going up against Boogie Anton. I hate it when I, my wife gasses out too. <laughs> but is, the next kid here, uh, David Diaper Rash, took exception to the uh, nickname that I gave him. But he's fighting oh Jamie Anton Johnny. This one's over. Before it starts. And he's out. He was out when the foot kicked him, and that's it. Fast uh, knockout in UCE. When you uh, go by the nickname of Diaper Rash, I guess that's what we can expect out of you. All right, well, let's talk about since you got knocked on your ass. You're not happy about being called Diaper Rash, are you? No, no, not at all. Well, you got a little bit of a rash on your ass from falling on it so hard tonight, so it's kind of an appropriate nickname, wouldn't you say? No, I wouldn't, if you'd like to be next. <laughs> Boogie Anton getting it done. Now we're going to go into the heavyweights. It's a guy calling himself Big Sexy going up against Junior Sailor. And uh, I've got that knockout power for him if he wants to uh, try to trade. Uh, I'm just going to try my hardest and see how it goes. Uh, I don't know the guy and I don't know his fighting, so I can't tell you how it's going to go. <laughs> Speaking of slow, Junior Sailor is a little slow in the head, isn't he? Junior <laughs> Sailor Lewis. Right, right, right. But what about Big Sexy? Where the hell did he get that nickname? Uh, big Sexy, man. You got to love this sexy. kid. You can clearly see why they call him that. But look at his shirt. Big Sexy. It says on his shirt. One big sexy man. Ooh, landed a pretty good left right there and uh, kind of made Junior Sailor. The reason this one didn't make it on television is because it stomped over oh, just that well, fast. There right you there. go. And then the he gets hammered about got five there. Yeah, Lonnie's going to let him get hit a few times in the <laughs> kidneys. Well, he, Lonnie well doesn't, he doesn't know. He's not going to stop Lonnie him. doesn't want him to go home empty handed. You know, he didn't buy the uh, souvenir t shirt, so he's got to go home with the souvenir black eye and or fat lip. Number one stunner. Big Sexy, what the hell happened out there? Sorry, I'm still Big Sexy. <laughs> Sometimes Big Sexy is all in the eye of the beholder. Junior Salu getting it done. Now we're going to move into it. some more little guys. Dave Thomas and Blake Sprouse. And your tool down. <laughs> <laughs> David Thomas and Blake Sprouse coming out here to mix it up. Don't know much about these guys, Johnny. Don't know much about the duck boy other than the fact that he uh, doesn't really train. Street fighter by nature and... Uh, Tough guy by heart is what he does. Five told foot six, 130 pounds. Um, all right. Yeah, I uh, fought at the East Center uh, three weeks ago. Um, got, I lost to a guillotine choke. I've been working uh, my takedown defense, uh, trying to uh, work more on keeping my, the fight standing up. Well, I think I'm an excellent striker. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I've been conditioning really hard for this fight. Um, uh, I've had, you know, three fights, on, or two fights under my, my belt, so um, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, I, I'm not too worried about what he's going to do. I'm going to play my game. I'm going to keep him away. I'm going to keep throwing punches um, and just do what, I, what I'm good at. You know, my mom says I'm a winner already, so I'm not too worried about losing this time. <laughs> That's great. Man. That is great. That my, is my man, old sprout. No, no, no worries, man. My mom says I'm a, I'm a winner already, and he is a winner. <laughs> you know, he's up there training with the Mushin Group, and those guys are as good as it gets. They are as good as it gets, Mike. They're getting tough. He gets tougher every time he fights, and this will be uh, his opportunity to show his skills against Duck Boy. Uh, just to get back into shape, basically, and I've always been interested in fighting. I've done a lot of fighting, physically in high school. Just kids would talk crap. I'd hit him. I'm a street fighter. Um, I can take it to the ground if I need to. Um, I've done a little bit of jujitsu training in the past, a little bit of wrestling in high school. Basically, it's street fighting. I love to bang. Basically, I'm going to have to come into it and just get a feel for what he's got, and what he's bringing, and then go from there. I don't know much about the kid. I've never seen any of his fights, so I'm going to have to be pretty cautious. I do understand that he might be training in jujitsu, so hope not to let it go to the ground. 
Oh, all right. That's a good strategy. You know, <laughs> hey, I'm a street fighter. This kid's training a moose, and I want to keep it on my feet where I can get the possibility of getting well, a, a knockout. I don't know that people don't realize this, but at Mushin, they're extremely good on their feet as well. Yeah, oh, yeah. E even better so, Mike, they're, they're, I think, sometimes. They've got a very good Muay Thai background up there uh, with Master Chai in the group. And then, so, I mean, they're tough on their feet and they're tough on the ground. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're both. Don't underestimate one over the other. You know, I think Blake Sprouse is working over there with Kaiser and with Yamasaki. Oh, and, oh man. Big punches well, coming out of both these guys. And you can see how tough that, that they are up there. That's a great Dang, exchange, man, my man. goodness, Johnny. This is good stuff. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> Duck Boy, man. He's got. I like this kid. He ain't afraid. He said, Oh, oh man. Oh. Big right hand. <laughs> He's out oh. and out cold, Johnny. You're going to wake him up around next week. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That boy feels good about that one, and he should. That was a huge punch. Can you say highlight reel? Oh, that's definitely going to be on a lot of highlight reels. Holy. Especially that was a good exchange yeah. there. Good knees, good good uh, exchange on both guys, and then all of a sudden, but ding. Boom, and the only oh. thing that stopped him was his forehead oh. as his mouthpiece flew across. Oh, man. That was a, one of the better that's knockouts it. we've seen. That's it. Wow. That is it. David Thomas, man. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. Well, you, you, can see, <laughs> you can see he's okay. He's back up and, and doing all right. But David Thomas with a big right hand wins that one in exciting fashion. Ironically, Dave Thomas got the big knockout there. Blake Sprouse got his jaw broken. Blake actually came back and fought. We never saw Dave Thomas again. We come back and we're going to take a look at the Batman, Dennis DeGloria and Renee Kronvold. Welcome back to the Ultimate Combat Experience. It's time now for your main event. And if you followed the Ultimate Combat Experience for any length of time, you know there have been some very heated rivalries. This is one of the biggest and the best. Big J, Justin Wright, and Brandon the Murder Melendez, they hate each other. It's time to get it on at your main event. Check it out. Well, Mike, this is what Ultimate Combat is all about. You've got a guy that likes to talk about how he fights all over the country, and you've got a kid, and I mean a kid from West Jordan that wants to take him on. This is what everybody's looking forward to. <laughs> I don't really know what to say about this, Tim, because uh, this really has just be it's grown up to be such a big thing that when we first announced this fight, man, there's just been so much drama around it. It's, it's really blown up out of our hands. Brendan Melendez steps into the ropes, and I mean, when you talk about bringing a posse, he brings half of the neighborhood with him walking in uh, tonight. And Big J's also got lots of support here at the E-Center. I'd rather be in Big J's neighborhood there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this kid, and, you know, he'll make reference to it in a minute when we talk to him pre uh, before the fight. This is a kid that has surprised so many people, including you, time and time again. Time and time again, and I keep saying I will never bet against Big J because he just keeps meeting and exceeding everybody's expectations. He steps in the ropes tonight, and uh, as we mentioned, brought a lot of friends and family ringside. Let's see what they had to say leading up to this one. Lots of trash talking. You guys always talk about your records or whatever your records are. I go, I got a very impressive record. I have a very impressive record, and I don't need to tell you because it might intimidate you. As far as I know, you have a pretty crappy record out of the state, and I want to know because I'm not intimidated. I show you how good I am. I don't need to tell you. Here you are challenging me, an 18-year-old weekend warrior. What's up with that, Brandon? I hope you're ready. I ain't seen nothing about you, and your last fight at the finals was a joke, so I hope you're going to fight a lot better than that because if you're going to fight like that, you're going to lose quite easily. With you being a fighter who fights all over the country, I guess that means when I beat you, that's kind of like I beat all them too. And I don't got to travel to do that. I can just do it right here and you guys can come to me. You're going to have a hard time. I've seen how you punch. There's some girly punches. They're not hard enough to knock someone out like me. How's that going to make you look when you get knocked out by someone who hits like a girl, as you say? Any way you want to bring it, I'll give it to you any way you want. If you want a scrambled egg, if you want some bacon, or even some sausage, you can have it. Because I'm going to cook it right up. Nice sweet breakfast in the morning. Okay, Brandon, one thing I gotta tell you is that I don't like eggs and I'm a vegetarian, so you and Tim are gonna have to have your own sausage party. <laughs> um, I, I train really hard, so you know, I got a lot of people that help me get here. I got high ridge construction, Alan, you know, he's my partner, he helps me out a lot, takes care of me in a lot of ways. Win or lose, this is probably gonna be my last fight for a while, so I'd like to thank all my fans and all of you out there who support me and support the show. And I just wanna thank all you people out there for supporting me. Everybody that you know respects the game and re um, recognizes a really good fighter. If you recognize that and you know who's a good fighter, I respect you for respecting me as a fighter. And it's a sport, so 
respect the sport, and I just want to thank all you people out there. Thank you. You know, like they say, never bet against Big J. And again, Tim, I'm kind of speechless after that one. I don't know if Brandon got a job at Denny's or what, but I'll take mine over easy. Yeah, I was giving them pretty good scores for the trash talk right up until they started talking about the breakfast menu, and then they lost me somewhere. But you heard Big J say, and I know he's told his dad and his family this, that he wants this to be his... Uh, swan song. He wants this to be his final appearance in the ring and he wants to show well there's that left hand that Melendez says was a girly punch. Almost caught one. Well hey yeah he walked into a bit of a punch there and, and this is where Justin Wright's good. He's got such reach advantage on most of the guys in his weight class but Brandon this is where Brandon's tough. Once he gets inside on you he's just so strong and so physical. Now he's got Brand or, uh, Justin right where he wants him. And you talk a lot when Melendez fights about that knee up position that he takes and he almost found himself there but he just didn't have room in the corner where he gets up on one knee and actually gives him a little more uh, leverage to throw big punches and big elbows like that one. Oh he's extremely good at that. He's really good at f fighting from the knee up, knee up position. He's doing a good job of avoiding the guard here. Justin Wright wants to pull him into his guard and Brandon Melendez is having none of that. Uh, Brandon's uh, pretty much having his way with him right now. Puts a knee right into the face of uh, Justin to keep him down. And now Justin hit him once, I think, and uh, Brandon got in a bit of a, de a defensive posture and finds himself back in the guard. I'm pretty impressed with Justin's ability to pull him into his guard. I didn't realize that Justin had improved on his ground game quite this much because Brandon Melendez, you remember, against Steve Sharp, was able to maintain that knee up position and really did some damage against Steve Sharp. And, and it looks like Justin Wright prepared for that and was able to pull him into his guard. You see Melendez playing a little hide and seek here. He'll sit there for a minute. Now watch, he'll sit up and throw a punch either with a right hand or a left hand. And uh, that reach advantage you talk about, uh, Justin trying to get Melendez off of him so that he can throw a punch just outside that reach. It's the explosiveness that he throws those punches with. He covers up, covers up, covers up, and he pops up and throws punches with such explosiveness. That's where he hurts his opponents, and he's very good at that. Just misses with one there as Justin tries to get a reversal. Uh, elevated the hips, but just didn't have enough to get uh, Melendez over. You know, and Justin doing a pretty good job of dodging those punches. He's not taking any of those full on just yet. He's been able to just move his head to the side just a little bit to avoid taking the full brunt of those shots. And it looks like it's frustrating Brandon just a little bit. Not much going on at this point, but Melendez continuing that tactic of uh, playing a little hide and seek. He'll put his head down for a minute, then he'll sit up. And Justin, for his part, doing a good job when he senses that Melendez is rising, he'll push away with his knees to get uh, a little more distance there. Yeah, nice work there. And actually, Justin's like throwing punches from underneath, which a lot of our guys don't do that. They just hang on. Justin's throwing little uppercuts here, little hooks there, just trying to work up the body. Now we've seen uh, Steve Sharp be so effective. But what's oh. going on here? Melendez on his feet, striking a downfighter. Lonnie has to step in here. That's illegal. Well, when they disengage like that, Lonnie she usually steps in and, and stands the other guy up, but Brandon Melendez didn't really offer an opportunity for that. I want to listen and hear what's being said over there in the corner there. you got a couple guys pretty angry in the corner. Well, I think Brandon walked over to Justin and said he apologized that he that wasn't intentional. Well, Justin looks like he's a little fuzzy in the eyes there. Dr. Katsumani asking him uh, what day of the week it is. He says, heck, I don't know what day of the week it is <laughs> on my best day. It's, it's September 11th, Tim. I don't know how you forget. It's 9-11. We just did a tribute for that. But <laughs> You know, the doctor looks at him and says he's okay. Lonnie's not so sure. He continues to look at him in the corner, asking another question. Lonnie's not going to let this go. Lonnie says he, he, that Justin Wright's eyes just were too fazy, uh, fuzzy for him. And uh, let's take a look in your Crush Combat Camp brought to you by Mountain High Motorsports where there was good action early on. Justin Wright actually landed a punch. We talked about Melendez getting him where he wanted to be by throwing him to the ground. And then it was just a battle uh, of, of trying to stay within, keep him within his guard or trying to get out of the guard. And out of frustration, Brandon Melendez stood up and punched him twice in the face. So let's quickly explain what's happened here. Lonnie looked closely at Justin and there's the shot that just two of them is a matter of fact that hit him illegal punches in the state of Utah and I think what Brandon is saying is that he fights this way elsewhere and he just in the heat of the battle lost track of what he could and couldn't do and threw some punches that well, he when, when, you, when somebody the fight is stopped as a result of an illegal technique they're gonna stop it let's listen to what these guys are saying I, times, I, I fight out of state and that is legal it's habit I train all around I fight everywhere it's just habit I couldn't defend it hey, I'm guy. sorry dude
okay? The only problem is, I already said I'm retiring after this fight. Well, there's a controversial thing now. We have to rematch. Yeah, I know. It's controversial. All People right. eat it up. All you right. gotta, you gotta end What's with up? a real win or a loss. Yeah. And as I mentioned, Justin, and they're both saying they didn't want it to end this way. Lonnie steps in and says nobody wanted it to end this way, but. Uh, uh, there were promises made by Big J that he was not going to fight again after tonight. When you're 18, you can't retire. You can quit fighting, but you can't retire. But uh, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. I know Big J is going to come back and do this thing again. This is one of those times where only in Utah can you get knocked out and still win the fight. <laughs> Brandon Melendez knocks out Big J, and Big J gets his hand raised. Who knew? They ended up getting back in there and mixing it up again, and I'm going to save that for another day. You can watch for that. That's going to wrap the show for tonight. We've got a lot more knockouts. As I said, we're still digging through them, so make sure you tune in next week. We've got more KO Nation, the Ultimate Combat Experience. We'll see you next week.